Well, all eyes will be on the red carpet at the Metropolitan Museum of Art tonight in New York City. Fashion's Biggest Night kicks off our Hot Topics presented by the Walton Arts Center. Now, stars of film, fashion, music, sports, and social media will ascend the steps of the Metropolitan Museum of Art tonight for the Met Gala. Celebrities will sip cocktails, have dinner, and sample the new exhibit, Sleeping Beauty's Reawakening Fashion. It's fashion's biggest night and one of the most photographed events in the world. Hosts of this year include J. Lo and Zendaya, Bad Bunny and Chris Hemsworth, and Vogue editor-in-chief Anna Wintour. The dress code for this year is the Garden of Time, though the theme is often interpreted loosely. Now, Jason, what's your yeah. opinion on the Met Gala? I don't know. Let's. I mean, I love the Met Gala because, man, look at, I mean, you can see in years past how much yeah. fun we've had. Two people dressed up as a uh, cat yes. that last year. Yep. Um, you're right. It's, it is a loose interpretation. I'm interested to see how they interpret, uh, what did you say it was, gardens? Yes, Garden of Time, I believe. Yes. I, do you have a favorite Met Gala theme from years past? Oh, yeah, what was that? Uh, well, mine, I think, is when they did, I think it was called Heavenly Bodies. It's when Zendaya dressed up as John oh, yes, Arc. Yes, yes. Everyone had all those beautiful stained glass ones. It was great. Yeah, absolutely. Well, here's something that might interest you, Maddie. Madonna put on a free concert uh, this weekend. She turned Rio de Janeiro's vast stretch of sand into an enormous dance floor. Ooh. And get this, an estimated 1.6 million people wow. attended the last show of her celebration tour. That's more than 10 times her record attendance of 130,000 in 1987. Jeez. Now, she's 65. The 65-year-old queen of pop performed her classic hits, including Like a Virgin and Hung Up. City Hall estimated that this superstar performance injected $57 million into the local economy. I mean, that is a ton of people out there. My question is, how? <laughs> what's your view like? Yeah, you know? you know, I mean, those those screens can only do so much. Right. I guess it's more just the ambiance, getting to hear, you know, Madonna, Madonna. live is such a great experience. Yeah, and the capper to this uh, monumental tour that she's been on. So yeah. good to see some support for her down there in Rio. Crazy. Well, Variety honored four influential women at their 2024 Power of Women luncheon. Honorees included the Brazilian superstar Anita, Law & Order SVU star Mariska Hargitay, showrunner Shonda Rhimes, and comedian Amy Schumer. The luncheon celebrates the charitable work done by the honorees, who will be featured on four separate covers for the late April print edition of Variety. The print issue also includes the annual survey of accomplished women in media and entertainment. Now, I gotta say, I love Shonda Rhimes. Okay. I love I, Grey's Anatomy, How to Get Away with Murder, Bridgerton. She sure. is just a great showrunner. I think she does such good stuff for TV. We are deep into Amy Schumer's Life After Beth right mm. now that's on Hulu, which is a fantastic show talking about, it deals with a lot of different things. It has like um, a lot of comedians in it, so you mm. think it would be light. And while there is some light material, it, it's also a, an emotional roller coaster. Wow. So anyway, I'd love to see this, and I'd love to know that there's gonna be separate covers celebrating celebrating all yeah. the accomplishments Super of those cool. women. Yeah, very cool. Worlds collided on Sunday night as comedians and athletes descended on the Kia Forum for the roast of football legend, and in my opinion, the GOAT, got to say it, Tom, <laughs> Dra Tom Brady. Brady took his share of barbs from comedians, former teammates, and his longtime coach during this made-for-streaming comedy event on Netflix. Kevin Hart, one of the participating comedians, said it was a chance to break down people's preconceived notions about mm. the former NFL quarterback. You know, I, I like this because we are seeing more and more live events coming to our streaming platforms. Yes. And so many people are familiar with Netflix and it's just been kind of like you watch your show or you watch your movie. But this was a live event. Yeah. And if you missed it, you can go back and, and watch it now um, because it's, it's up. But it happened in real time last night. Yeah, I think it's such a, a good thing for streamers to kind of get on that live, and it seems like it was a funny event, too. Absolutely. I mean, you got the owner of the Patriots there. You got his old coach, Belichick, sitting over there, Kevin Hart. It was only a ton of fun, so go out and find that if you're interested in seeing more. Yep. Well, the Ryan Gosling-led action comedy The Fall Guy opened below expectations with $28.5 million, providing a lukewarm start to the summer movie season. But in a surprise, number two at the box office went to the re-release of Phantom Menace, the first episode of George Lucas's Star Wars prequels. It collected $8.1 million 25 years after the movie grossed an initial $1 billion. Last week's top film, the Zendaya drama Challenger, slid into third place with $7.6 million in its second week. 
horror flick Tarot and Godzilla X Kong rounded out the top five. Jason, did you get a chance to go see Fall Guy over the weekend? No, but I'm going to. I'm going to. And I know it's kind of a lukewarm start, but I still heard phenomenal things. Critics are raving about this oh, yeah. one, talking about the chemistry between Emily Blunt and Ryan Gosling, so I'm definitely checking it out. I was surprised to see, it's not a huge surprise, but I uh, it, initial expectations were that Zendaya's Challengers was going to be in second place this mm -hmm. weekend, and then The Phantom Menace kind of you know, cut its way uh, into the, the second spot. Yeah. Light sa sabered on in there. Yeah, you know, Star Wars just never <laughs> dies, I that's guess. That's right, that's right. It's <laughs> always relevant, for sure.